In a world of so much negativity, where things are constantly pulling you down, the Word of God can build you up. Get inspired with Isabella P. Hello, I'm Isabella, and welcome to another week of Get Inspired. I am so excited because I like to talk about love. I've been talking about love for a very long time. And until the Holy Spirit tells me to stop, that's what I'm going to keep talking about. Because right now in this world, with everything that's going on around us, we need to know how to love everyone around us. Love people that we don't even know in spite of. Last for, Like I said, for the last couple of weeks, I talked on being rooted and grounded in love. I discuss Ephesians 3 and 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that he being rooted and grounded in love. God has rooted his love in us with no reservation on his part. We should receive his love in like manner and then give unto others how he has given unto us. True love, like I keep saying, is sacrificial and always involves the giving away of yourself in some form of the other to someone else. Today we're going to talk about love covers a multitude of sins. 1 Peter 4 and 8 says, Above all, love each other deeply. I like that. He said love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. The Apostle Paul teaches us the following. Humans are flawed, ourselves included. What makes it difficult to love others is their faults, their flaws, and their sins. The love of God can empower us to love others in spite of their faults and failures. Because this is what God does for us. And he does it for some of us on a daily basis, some of us on an hourly basis. God is not saying that we should act like others' faults, their flaws, failures, and sins don't exist. That's not what he's saying. No, it's ju- it just commands us to love them anyway, just like God loves us. The love of God enables us to love others without being judgmental and without holding grudges. We all know that our friends, families, co-workers, children sometimes do not always act the way we want them to, but we are called to love them in spite of. Consider this for a minute. You have flaws, you have faults, and you have many failures. You also have sin. You also make mistakes. You have weaknesses. And guess what? God still loves us. We have a God who loves us in spite of our mistakes. He then calls and commands us to do the same to others. I have thought before that Jesus commanded us to love one another. So we've got to find a way to love each other under all circumstances, and with all faults. God loves us unconditionally. With that said, we ought to love others in spite of the fact that they get on our nerves sometimes. And we know some people like that. I know some of you are probably running out of fingers on your hand trying to count some people like that. But it doesn't matter. You have to love them in spite of. In spite of the fact that they have failed us or at some point are going to fail us. In spite of the fact that they aren't perfect and are sometimes even difficult to get along. Oh my goodness. Mm -mm -mm. Just remember, someone might be saying the same thing about you. So while you're busy talking about, oh, I can't love her because she's so difficult to get along. Oh, it's so hard for me to love her because she's so annoying. Oh, I can't stand her. Someone else might be saying the same thing about you. And you would like them to love you too. So you should love those around you in spite of all their faults. By profession, I'm an operating room nurse. I remember coming back from Iraq and I was so angry and having done surgeries in a war zone, I saw some of the worst injuries in my life. Soldiers missing some limbs, some of them missing all their limbs. Children being burnt, burnt from head to toe while they were still alive. I was very angry. 
we were commanded to take care of them. Like even, even the soldiers that don't belong to us, like they were one of us. At times, that was difficult for me. I remember thinking, we have an opportunity right now to hurt them back while we're in the operating room or just let them die. But the thought always went back to who we are as American soldiers and what we stand for as Americans. We had to do what is right and we took good care of them. The same goes for us as soldiers in the Lord's army. We are children of God and we believe in the word of God. So it doesn't matter what those people around us do to us. It doesn't matter how angry we may get at them. At the end of the day, the bottom line is we have to love them in spite of. We stand for love and should love others in spite of how others hurt us or treat us. Like the text says, love covers a multitude of sins. When you accept someone, it doesn't mean you are agreeing with them on everything. Their lifestyle may be difficult, maybe, excuse me, different from yours, but you still have to love them. I remember having a soldier and he, and he once looked at me and said, he did not want to tell me he was gay because as a Christian, he's scared that I was not going to like him like the rest of the soldiers. And I remember responding to him. I say, I may not like your lifestyle. I may not like, like what you're doing right now and what you're doing is sin, but I love you as a person. I love you. It doesn't matter to me whether you gay, straight, black, white. I love you because God has commended me to love you. It doesn't mean that you approve of everything that they will do or the things that they do. It just means you have the love of God in you and he's able to pass it on to them. You simply love them in spite of God's love is one sided. It is not contingent upon what the other side does. God's love only considers the side God is on and it loves. Romans 15 and 17 says, Therefore, accept one another, even as Christ also accepted you to the glory of God. Accept one another. That's what we have to do. Accept them just as they are. Love them just as they are. God extends his grace to you. Now you are free to extend his grace to others. We have to be patient with others when it comes to covering their sins with love. The Bible commands us, cover each other's sin with love. Cover their sin, not to cure it or fix it, not throw it in their face every minute you get. Not making them feel that they do not deserve your love. Remember the body of Christ is a place where imperfect people get loved in spite of their past sins, their present mess, and their future mistakes. So on this week, get inspired to be that person today that will cover your brother or sister's sin with love. Get inspired to love them in spite of their imperfections. Get inspired to spend time praying for them and covering them in love. You are not their fixer, God is. Stop trying to fix them or cure them of their sins. Just cover them in love. Until next time, stay inspired.